Welcome to the Dead Bedroom Revival Podcast. My name is Curry, your host, and I'm very, very excited to be making this episode because I've got a new microphone and um, I really apologize for the uh, background noise. I'm now conscious of it because uh, a guy listened to my episodes recently that I know and he told me that I, I love your content, but the background noise and uh, he's offered to actually help me with some of uh, my content because he knows how to remove background noises. He also knows how to uh, remove the arms and ums and the uh, sort of blank spaces within the, the podcast. So it should help with the uh, better listening experience. Now, it, it hasn't been done yet because obviously um, I've had to do this episode and uh, upload it. But uh, hopefully in the next few weeks, you should start seeing a better quality of episodes coming out in terms of the sound and just less background noise. Because I, 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 I believe in doing it straight away. I think uh, if I wanted to make everything perfect, I would never release any podcast episodes. And this is a very important lesson in life. I think um, we are always waiting for perfection before we make a move. And when you wait for perfection, um, and, and in fact, one of my mentors, he said, you have to learn to make imperfect imperfect. Uh, make the move with imperfectly so you you make the move and then when you make the move you create momentum and then when you create momentum as you move uh, you start refining the process so you actually get better and better so uh, this is one of those uh, iterations for us to now actually now uh, refine the process and then make it a better listening experience for you guys so this is uh, not what I was going to be talking about actually but um, I've been uh, sort of looking for information and there's quite a few things I wanted to say Monday and Tuesday uh, life got in the way so I've not been able to make episodes which is gotten because this is one of my favorite things to do so without further ado um, I was in the Facebook group on Monday and we were having conversations and I, I usually sort of have conversations have a look and see what people are saying uh, one of the ones some one guy had gone on the weekend he decided to make a romantic um, a day for his wife. I uh, gone and bought flowers, uh, candles, lingerie. Really, just pulled out everything in order to uh, make it feel special, feel, feel romantic, and then hopefully uh, finish with a happy ending. And now, that's a really cool thing to do um, because as what he did, there was nothing wrong with it. Uh, women did like those things because Hollywood has taught them to like it, and they. They want to experience something like that. Uh, it makes them feel special. And they've been trained to, to feel that way. So it's, it's very important to be able to do that. But sometimes when you do that with an ulterior motive or, um, you know, especially in this case, you was hoping that by doing this, it would soften her in order to feel desire and then arousal and then they would have sex. It didn't work that way because... When it comes to arousal and uh, desire, we, in fact, when, we, when it comes up to sex within a relationship, there's, and when I say sex, I'm talking about the sex brain, by the way. So if you think about the sex brain, there's two gears. There's one that allows you to go and explore and be adventurous and want to uh, experience desire and then move on to um, having sex. Then there's a part of you that also stops stops that. So uh, when you're in a certain scenario, it stops you from actually feeling desire and not to have sex. Now with your partner, this is where they lay. They, 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 this is their normal or that this is the default setting actually. So the default setting is not to um, be stimulated by anything external or even internal to move them from oh. I've seen this thing and then the feeling of uh, desire comes over, comes over them and then they try and explore it. So they've got this thing on the brakes. It's almost like, um, yeah, I remember once, um, I, uh, my friend was telling me about when they went on holiday and then uh, it was strange for them when they realized that they just stumbled on, they were being given looks. And then when they really looked what was going on, they realized that they'd walked in onto a nudist beach. So they were all fully clothed and it was quite awkward. And I said to them, why didn't you just 
you know, strip off and join in. I said, oh, it was it felt awkward. It wasn't good. So that's that's the sort of so you you, you it's impossible. It's it's actually possible that for some people, uh, well, it's okay for them to let everything hang and and be cool with it. Uh, for somebody else, uh, they might feel shame. They might feel um, like you know vulnerable. So it stops them from actually revealing themselves in that way. So we are all different, and sometimes your default setting could be um, somebody who can just let everything hang. But sometimes you're the one that feels like, no, I don't really feel comfortable with doing this. So it's really understanding what moves somebody from the place where you are, you know, inhibiting that or suppressing that sexual desire or moving them to the place to the, where they are open and willing to um, be adventurous with sexual desire. And this is where I started talking about it. And I said, part of it to do to move somebody from uh, suppressing of se sexual desire to some wanting to explore things, you have to cultivate a leadership mindset. And um, I think the fact that I said um, that you need to cultivate a leadership mindset, I think it rubbed him up the wrong way. Then he said, I'm already a leader. And uh, I think when you think of, uh, of leadership, I think most people feel like um, if you're a boss at work or if you you're, you operate as a, a, a CEO or you operate as a, as a manager somewhere, uh, therefore, because you've got that title, it means that when you come to your house, you're still a leader. Uh, I think there's, um, you, you are a leader in certain areas. In some areas, certain areas, you're a follower. And everybody has got this, just like, you know, Elon Musk is a, a is is the leader of Tesla, but if you put him in a uh, in Congress, for instance, he's no longer a leader. He's now a follower. So they they everybody has got those roles, and most people, or in fact, most men, um, because they do not know how to lead in a relationship. When they come to a at home, uh, they take a passive um, approach to 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 the relationship which makes it very difficult for the, the person to show leadership. So being decisive, make good decisions, and actually make good, good decisions consistently. And sometimes when I say good decisions, I mean making the decision, because not all decisions can be good. So you, there's times when you're going to mess up. And when you do mess up, you're willing to own up and then recalibrate, and then make another, good, another decision. So I guess most guys, they sort of give up this decision-making to their spouse and therefore she just thinks what the hell like <laughs> you can't even make a decision you know you can't you're not even that decisive so this is where i got we got talking about this and i said well if you are a really good leader then why is it that you can't communicate very well the feelings that you're feeling in the relationship that you're not getting and actually um move that person to or at least inspire them to move to a place where your relationship is fulfilling for both of you so it takes leadership skills to move somebody in from that um, point of or place of being suppressing the sexual desire to moving them to a place where they want to explore and be connected with you in that way so it those are the skills that you have to cultivate so it we did have that back and forth and it was an argument it was, i wasn't feeling angry or anything I think maybe it might have dropped him up because maybe it felt like I was disrespecting him. But I think when it comes to this situation where you are in a sexless relationship and you've probably tried so many things, and a lot of things that you've tried are stuff that you've watched on TV and um, people tell you that that's what they want. And again, I turned around and I said, uh, what you think she wants is probably not what she needs. Uh, what she needs is that you behave in certain ways that speak to a reptilian brain. So uh, what that means is that there's certain functions in your brain where if you see, she sees certain sort of behaviors, it will naturally uh, remove that suppression of sexual desire. So again, um, I'm going to sort of try and cut it off for here. Uh, I, feel that I felt a little bit uh, out of uh, whack in terms of making this uh, episode. Usually I flow. I felt like I was really forcing this episode. Um, 
If you want to learn more, go to www.thebedroomrevival.com and then you'll be able to get uh, some trainings as well, extra trainings, get a link to a Facebook group, go and join the Facebook group, and then hopefully we'll be able to give you some um, valuable information and really start showing you how to become a leader within your relationship and move your partner from the state of being suppressing sexual desire to a place where she's looking to explore and be connected with you. So thank you very much for listening. I'll be seeing you soon. Take care.